can, you know, like, like, a, like a going to high ground and circling the wagons kind of thing. You know, and Chuck Baldwin just moved there for, for much the same reason, but, you know, people have been doing that for decades. You know, my buddy Elias up there, he moved there 15 years ago from Tennessee, you know. So anyway, folks are looking for bastions, and one concept is the free county. Mm -hmm. Even before you get a free state, get a county. If I can convince Sheriff Mack, for example, to move to Montana, I'll run for county attorney, he'll be the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> and all we need now is a good judge. I'm going to raise hell, you know, if you blast. I'm going to sheriff. So, you know, wherever you are, try to pick, you know, if you can establish a free county, imagine the, like you, you're running for sheriff, right? Yes. If you could establish a true, truly free county in your, in your county, totally consistent with Bill of Rights. I'm talking like, you know, no friggin', you know, warrantless checkpoints, no that nonsense really being serious and hardcore about it, you would make waves across this country. That's my goal. Yeah, because Arpaio, he's strong on the, on the independence of the sheriff, but he is bad. Media whore, media whore. Fourth Amendment, militarization of the police, he's not good. Media you know, whore. Go find the least populated county and then that's how you do it. We were, we were looking into that yeah. in Texas. In the county in Texas with 49 people. It was retarded, something like a hundred people in the county. Good, like, great. That listen. would not be hard. They said somebody already tried to do that. Oh, they, could, they, could they, fought, they fought them off. <laughs> <laughs> they went slick enough on how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Bogwan in Oregon did that. Yeah, they did it too. Well, my, my, my attitude is, is, is move into a county and become just become one of the people there first. Don't try to walk in like, oh, I'm here to save you. you know, so right. Become one of them. And then, you know, it's carrot and stick. You know, well, not, it's mostly almost all carrot, actually. You know, while you bring in good folks, you also um, turn the folks that are already there into constitutionalists or liberty minded people. And you can do it. I've turned like rabid, anti gun, tree hugging leftists into gun toting. One guy went too far, became a, became a fed. Nah. <laughs> he, joined the, he joined the Border Patrol, then he moved over to, over to, to customs, and now he's an ICE. But anyway, I, I, you know, you can you can you can turn them from whatever they are, yeah. given that personal interaction. So, yeah, yes, sir. Um, I understand the, the distinction between the Army Reserve or Military Reserve and National Guard, but in your opinion, not de facto, but legally, right, is today's National Guard the National Guard of each state? The militia that is mentioned in the Constitution. Legally. The Constitution of the State of Arizona provides for the organized militia, which is the National Guard of Arizona, and the unorganized militia, which is all able-bodied persons between the ages of 18 and 45. Right. I mean, every state's a little different. Montana, there's no, there's no, there's no station like that at all. It just says the able-bodied citizenry are the militia. Period. No. Right. But, but, but no, I, the Dick Act. You should go look up the Dick Act. The Dick Act is what kind of created this artificial. You know, um, re you know, uh, unorganized and organized, and, and carved out the National Guard as a, as almost a, a permanently federalized um, select militia. It's not really the same thing. I'm not an expert on it. Dr. Vieira is. So um, I'm reading his book right now. The you know, constitutional Homeland Security. Um, you know, militia, but the militia. Oh, and what he, what he says is that it's it's neither fish nor fowl. The National Guard is weird, you know, bastardization of the two concepts. The federal government owns all the equipment. The state doesn't own it. And the National Guard, you know, as you know, is The state doesn't entirely. own the state house. What's that? The state doesn't own the state house. It sold it not too long ago. Well, One thing on the Guard, though, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 and 16, declares that there's going to be some organization that's under the control of the state governor. It could be called the Easter Bunny Brigade. For, it doesn't matter what it's called. You mean, you mean, the, the, you mean, the, you mean the federal constitution? Yes. It, it yes. says that the Congress... Um, there's going to be an organization that's run by, that's under the governor's control that can be called up into national service for three things. It's going to be funded basically by Congress. It's going to be equipped and trained. Right. So whatever they call it, uh, no, it's because uh, of the militia. Congress right. Congress has the power sure, to sure. call forth the militia to right. suppress insurrection, to fell invasion. My point, violence. though, is if they if they change the name of it, there is if there is an organization that's under the control of the state that's funded by the federal government, it still is only authorized to be used for those three specific purposes well, in the Constitution. I got a friend that's in the Army Guard here in Arizona, 
and his email address is U.S. Army. Well, that's mill. a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. There are, Iraq. there are, it's, they're federalized. Sure. That, but another, another, uh, so it's a standing uh, another institution yeah. to think about is State Defense Forces and Home Guard. Sure. Okay. But we and don't want them nationalized for any reason. They can't be. Right. Right. And so, what's interesting about that is that the Constitution um, <laughs> forbids states from having their own military forces other than the militia. Um, the militia is subject to call up. And, and I think that's good. Like I said, if that's all we had, and, and they were trying to do something wrong, they tried to call you for an unconstitutional purpose, like outside of those three things, you could say, you know, well, okay, you could say, you know, screw you, I'm not going to do it. So, but this, the Constitution says you can't have um, without congressional authorization. Well, Congress did authorize in statutes state defense forces. So a state can have, under federal statute, a state can have a state defense force or home guard, call what you want, that is not set to call up. And that does have some utility. In the current weird world we're living in right now, where the National Guard is taken across the seas, that, you know, that's, they should not have been able to do that. And militia is right. supposed to be for use here at home only, not across the seas. How many right. states are so, right. 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 so a lot of states have state guard, or state, state defense forces, but they're kind of dormant. Like California's got one. You know California has one? No. Yeah. I don't really pay attention a lot. California's to California. got, a, got a state guard. <laughs> Or, or yeah, a, a state What's his name? State defense force. <laughs> <What's his name? laughs> yeah. You know what? They don't have any guns. Right, right. Yeah. 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 We got butter knives. <laughs> Spoons. Plastic ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Biodegradable. Yeah. We have biodegradable <laughs> sports. Yeah, That's right. right. <laughs> Made out of alfalfa. Yeah. The, the reason I asked the question yeah. is if, if it comes to a point where the governors start reasserting their authority over how their National Guard uh, forces are used mm -hmm. and they go back to the Constitution and say you can't federalize the National Guard for this purpose the Constitution only provides right. for the net for the militia to be federalized under these circumstances will the federal government simply turn around and say well the federal guards not the militia mentioned in the Constitution well, the thing is they're they're taking federal money so they're bought and controlled that yeah. the, the one that's not taking federal money is the sheriff well it might be yes. the the okay no call that view I know for a fact is to stimulus money well the problem with the National Guard though is that it's become pretty much just another kind of reserve for the state yeah. You know, they're, they're overseas. They're deployed almost perpetually in Afghanistan and Iraq. There's a bill being introduced in Maine, I haven't seen the bill number yet, that actually, uh, if passed, would require the, the governor of Maine to refuse continued deployment uh, of, of the state National Guard troops uh, for anything but what's authorized in the Constitution. Right. We have model legislation for that at the, the Tuskegee Center. Really uh, it's not something that seems to be a real hot topic, but obviously this is important. You know, just to the Constitution, every issue, every time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I think Dr. Vera is correct. That the right answer is the states have the authority um, and the duty to institute a state militia, not something created by. I mean, part of the reason why it's neither you know neither you know efficient or foul is it's created by a federal act. Well, it's supposed to be state militias that, as Michael said, are subject to call up under certain conditions and, and you know, discipline established by Congress. Because when you're called up, you are, you are essentially part of the military. That's why there's an exception in, in the Fifth Amendment. It says no person shall be held to answer for, you know, a capital crime uh, unless they're in, you know, the militia in service. Because you become like the military and you are subject to UCMJ. But the, but the, you know, the, the genius of the founders is that if you, it's like, it's like Switzerland, look at Switzerland. Yeah. No standing army militia, even today. <laughs> How, if, if some dork got in there in, in charge of their very loose coalition of cantons and, and tried to call up the militia to suppress, you know, and, and tyrannize the people, <laughs> try to pull an Egypt on them, could they do it? Yeah. How? <laughs> You go suppress yourself. You know, it's not gonna work. You suppress him. You know why? You will be like you know, you know, eat me, forget to you. So there is a certainly like even the Sergeant May example. Even though the, the National Guard is not what we should have, not all the way there. The example of that sergeant and his entire unit from the Utah National Guard saying, "Forget it. We're not gonna confiscate guns during Katrina." You saw the video, right? Yeah. I mean, the reason why that's more likely to happen in the National Guardsmen is because they're not professional soldiers. He's got a day job. 
He doesn't need the Army's paycheck to provide for his family. It was a volunteer mission on top of that. He volunteered to go. He volunteered to go help people, not oppress them. Now, the 82nd Airborne, which was also there, unfortunately, it's more likely, I'm not saying it's categorical, but it's more likely that if you're there for a four-year stint or you've got in your mind a career and you're a full-time, you know, your paycheck comes from, you know, every, every once a month the eagle flies over and drops you the load, you know, you're dependent on them. It's just human nature. That's why they didn't, didn't want to rely on the virtue of people being able to overcome their own interests. They wanted to establish, you know, independent people once again independent farmers who were also the militia and were also the posse. The sheriff can't oppress the people in the town if the people in the town are his, are his law enforcement force. He can't do it. Rather than having like, you know, I moved to, I moved to small town Montana. This was a shock. I get there in Polson, Montana, and they're, they're on the Indian reservation. So you got, and, and then, so you got the county sheriff's office, you got the Polson Police Department, and you got the tribal police. I was like, I gotta move out of town. You know, this is just not good. So, but but then, they, then I went to one of these, like, you know, what they call them, Citizens Academies. And then one part of the class, they had a, like a little mock SWAT raid on us. They turned the lights out and throw a flashbang, you know, all kinds of nonsense. Turns out they have a 20-man SWAT team made up of, of officers from every one of those three departments. Tribal police, you know, snipers and MP5s, you know, separate rifles, MP5s, all kinds of stuff. You know, all the black body armor and all that. So 20 guys, I was like, what is this? Is this, this is a town of 4,000 people. Why do you need a 20 man, you, you got almost a platoon here. What's going on? So they get federal grants and federal goodies. You know? They get select fire M4s and, and MP5s to go fight the drug war. So, and I was like, oh, you know. So even in Montana, which is, you know, the next best thing to Alaska, probably, as far as freedom goes, even there, you've got this, you know, militarization of the police and, and so the, the sheriff is not relying on the people. They should have to rely on us. That's, what, that's how it should be, frankly. You know, I think you, the ideal would be you had yourself, one or two deputies, a dispatcher, whatever, and then if you need some serious backup, you have a posse. And you train those guys, but they're the people. Yeah, what do you say? Well, isn't that, is that not a standing army? Aren't these officers, police officers, they de facto, technically, since most of the well, a lot of their funding is from the federal government printing money out of thin air and give it to them. They're, they're basically dependent on, most of these departments are dependent on federal government. Yeah. Some, well, they're, some aspect, aren't they, yeah. in fact, funding a de facto standing army? Well, they're, they're neither fish nor fowl, too, because they're taking federal money, and, you know, there's always strings. Well, we got one uh, sheriff up in Montana who's rolling around in this brand new, you know, cut rolling command center, this big motor home. It's like, what's that, Reno Reigns? It's almost like one of those things, you know? It's like, it's like where's this Indian hot chick? And he's running around in this big command center with all these antennas on top of it. Oh, yeah, oh, like a million dollars. Yeah, they got one in Mesa. Yeah. I confronted well, him on it. So how is he going to be independent if he's dependent? He can't. He can't be an independent sheriff and be dependent on, on the feds for all the goodies. What? Is he really going to sacrifice when he comes right down to it and there's going to be an a, you know, ATF raid at my house or something? And, is he really going to buck them and say no and he's interpose himself? Yeah, he's, he's, that's right. He's he's hooked on it. It's like a drug. It's like a drug addict. Like I was uh, in a flight over here this morning. This, this I was watching this old man getting groped by the TSA, and he's just shaking his head and rolling his eyes. Turns out he's a, a professor, a Fulbright scholar, professor who travels the world and, and studies like like a Russian expert in Russian history. And he's you know I can talk to him a little bit. I can tell he's you know his left left perspective. And he was as ticked off at the TSA as any Tea Party person. <coughs> so, you know, the more they do that, the better, frankly. Mm -hmm. anyway, right. So I, I think in the long run we'll win. I think that the message of freedom is, is truth. And there's a reason why they don't teach it in schools. There's a reason why you don't see it on mainstream media, aside from like Judge Napolitano and maybe Stossel, those are like, you know, the wild mm -hmm. exceptions. So, but there's a reason why they don't teach right. it. And so, you know, my thinking is do the exact opposite of what they want you to do. The last thing they want you to do is go talk to the veterans and wake them up and get them to establish county militias, you know. So let's go do that. The last thing they want you to do is use gold and silver again. So let's go do that, you know. Think of, think of what Mark Potok, who's probably the law center, does not want you to do. And that's usually a good indicator of what you should go do, you know. That's what I do. 